This, yeah, the story of Sonny and Barney was really um, a hugely impactful story for our, for our lives. Um, it was a really slow realization that they weren't coming back. Uh, often kids would, would go and uh, sweep trains or travel for a while or work for a, a fruit vendor and eventually they'd make their way back. But after a week or so, it became apparent that this was slightly different, and particularly because we knew that their family was living on, on the platform station, uh, their mother and father anyway. And, and, and so when we realized that, we decided we had to do something about it. And, and, and from that moment on, really, was the beginning of, of Stop the Traffic. Sunny and Violet's story is, is the big spur to, to do all we do. Um, I think in some ways we're still looking for them and every story we tell and every action that we do and every uh, every campaign we launch is another way of looking for them and the thousands of children like them um, it's not a story you can switch off in your head um, I have three kids now and another on the way and if if you lose them for a second you panic We've never found these children. That will never go away, and it shouldn't ever go away for, for any of us, because one child is too many. When Mark first uh, uh, approached me um, about writing the uh, Stop the Traffic play from my perspective, uh, I think I became all British and very embarrassed and nervous, and those feelings haven't gone away at all. Um, but. I think seeing the, seeing the play and seeing how powerful it is and seeing that actually it's not about me, it's about trying to stop the traffic, that, then that, that's fine and that was great. And I just hope more people see the play because nobody who's seen this will ever look at trafficking stories or chocolate or, or whatever in the same way again. They'll, I, I, I would imagine everybody will try and do something. I think the play is simply astonishing uh, in, in getting across the variety of, of, of characters and, and, and trafficking experiences and the emotion and the dynamism of everything that's going on and whether it's portraying traffickers um, in a way which is realistic or in a way which is really kind of putting over the energy of, of the malice, um, the production just blows you away um, and they have put over um, the, the depth of despair that trafficking victims go through but also the, the families of those who lose children uh, go through. I, I never imagined that it would be quite so, um, an, quite such an emotional roller coaster from, from beginning to end. Um, they really have captured the, the, the essence of, of what this is all about. People who see this uh, play uh, and who want to get involved can get involved in, in, in a variety of ways. That there is something that everybody can do. In the play, uh, they, they talk about the problem with chocolate, that, that, that children are being trafficked to pick the cocoa beans that make the snack that we enjoy. And they also talk about the way of putting that right, which is buying fair trade chocolate. We can be sure that fair trade chocolate doesn't have that kind of exploitation. So the first and very easy thing that somebody can do is buy fair trade chocolate and not the other stuff. Um, and write to the companies that make it. And, and then start to think about what other products you buy. Because the trafficking related products are in your home. It, if it's not chocolate, it's the clothes we wear, it's the computers that we use, it's the mobile phones that we use. Underpinning a lot of the luxuries and enjoyment we have in these products, there is the trafficking and abuse of children and of adults. So that's a really good place to start, but we can do other things as well. One of the stories in the play is about a young girl who is, is groomed for sex and, and trafficked um, Right, right here, right in this country. And what can we do about that? Well, she was isolated because she was seen as different. She wasn't surrounded by friends. And I think we can all work to, to include everybody and, and look out for those who are vulnerable and uh, give them the advice and the message that we need to think about the relationships that we're getting into because they can bring danger. Uh, if they're not checked out. 
Um, and one of the initiatives also that Stop the Traffic is going to be launching soon is about girls' education. And we, at the end of this year, we're going to be raising money to keep girls in education in trafficking hotspots around the world. Because we know the longer a girl stays in education, and if she can be helped and guided and mentored into uh, productive employment, she's much less likely to be trafficked. And that process of education and employment of girls and young women can change the attitudes of communities, villages, towns and cities towards women. And that will really help to stop the traffic. So people can get, in, uh, get involved in raising money um, and, and helping girls stay in education. It's true, when, when I got on the plane and went to, went to India and uh, started working for Oasis there, my life has never been the same. Uh, it, it was a dream to work with, with street kids in India, and out of that has come this campaign around the world against human trafficking. And I think everybody needs to take hold of their dreams. It might seem limited, it might seem not leading anywhere, but it, it's what you want to do. But if you actually take hold of that, who knows where it's going, going to, to, to lead. This, this play has been part of the dreams of all these, these young people and their talents and skills, you know, ranging from film skills through to physical theatre to, to memorising the lines and delivering them in a fantastic way. And just doing that has led to hundreds of people being informed and becoming part of the movement to stop the traffic. So I would encourage any young person to take hold of their dreams and, and follow them through and just see where it's going to lead, because you never know. Last week, I was, um, I was in a massage parlour in, in, in Belgium. I was sitting with a, a, a Thai woman uh, called Bo, and she had been trafficked, she'd been abused. When, when, I, when I went into the, the massage parlour, she showed me a, um, a, a sonography a, a, of, of a baby. And she said, I, I'm pregnant. She didn't speak very good English. And so we were congratulating her and saying, you know, just trying to encourage her. And then she said, no, my husband and the other guys who run this massage parlor, they, they took me and they forced me to have an abortion. Um, and I, I'm falling apart mentally and they, they won't let me take the medication. How, I have no hope. And I want to say to the people who made this play, thank you on behalf of Bo, because people who see this will not walk past people like that, won't walk past the massage parlours. They won't let it happen in their community. This play will make a difference. And so on behalf of her and people like her around this country, I'd like to say thank you.